Welcome back everyone, I hope you're doing well, and in this video, we're going to take a look at ARK's newest ETF that just hit the market, and that is ticker ARKX, and that is their Space Exploration ETF. It's brand new, it just began trading, and at this current level, you can pick up a share for $20.30. And the interest in outer space has only been picking up over the past few years, and ARK sees a ton of future growth potential coming from the commercial side of this fast growing industry. And a statement from one of the fund's top analysts reads, space is already an invisible backbone to our economy. And we think that it's gonna become more so as satellite constellations begin to launch. So definitely over the next few decades, the space industry is poised for mass expansion and great innovation. And in this video, we're gonna go over ARK's new ETF that is focused on all the companies directly related to outer space and in the surrounding industries. We're gonna take a look at the fund's description, the companies they hold, and discuss the potential for the fund's future growth. But before we do that, I'm gonna ask you to please hit that like button and subscribe. I am the Gen Z investor, and every single day we talk about the stock market, going over different stocks you can buy, and any major market news. So please hit that like button, subscribe for the daily videos, and we're gonna jump right in to ticker ARKX, the newest space exploration ETF trading on the market right now. So this fund holds approximately 39 different stocks, which includes some pure play space companies like Iridium and Virgin Galactic, as well as some defense and aerospace giants in Kratos, Lockheed Martin, and Boeing. This fund is also investing in companies who are not traditionally connected to the space industry, such as the big Chinese e-commerce brands in JD.com and Alibaba, as well as some main agricultural plays in Trimble and Deer. So they do have some exposure to companies not pure play in the space sector, but have some related industries that are still gonna benefit from greater space exploration. And when the list of this ETF's top holdings went public, the company saw a lot of criticism and memes being made about their unique positions. And the top analyst said, Netflix, for example, has a weight of 1.25% in ARKX. And there was a lot of memes being made to how Netflix is related to the space exploration industry. And the analyst was quoted as saying, Netflix has 200 million paying subscribers. In the US alone, there's over 40 million people who don't have access to broadband. And so if a satellite solution can bring access to those customers and expand the adjustable market, the top line for Netflix, which is something that is very important to us, may continue to grow. So overall, they understand that Netflix is still highly related to the growth in satellite and broadband connection. So they included it in this ETF as a smaller holding because they do believe it will continue to grow as the exploration in the satellite industry continues to expand. So they do have some unique holdings in some big e-commerce players, some agricultural brands, in Netflix, and a few more if you take a look at the entire list. And now we're going to move on to ARK's website to go over the fund description and get a greater understanding of the companies they invest in. So why invest in ARKX? To gain greater exposure to space exploration, including orbital and suborbital airspace, enabling technologies and beneficiaries of aerospace activities such as the agricultural sector, internet access, GPS, construction, and imaging. And the fund has just launched on March 30th, 2021. And the objective is to grow their long-term capital. And this is an actively managed fund that will invest 80% of its resources or its assets in domestic and foreign equities of companies that are engaged in the fund's key investment theme of space exploration and innovation. This ETF comes with an expense ratio of 0.75% which is in line with all of ARK's other products. And of course, it is very high when compared to a simple S&P 500 index fund, which comes in at an expense ratio of 0.03. But when you compare this ETF with all the other actively managed funds on the market and the mutual funds offered by the big banks, those management expense ratios are coming in between 1.5% and 3% every single year. So right now, to get a company like ARK, who has a very strong history of outperforming the overall market at the expense ratio of 0.75%, it is still very attractive to most investors right now on the market seeking exposure to a high growth potential industry, for example, like outer space. 
and all of the companies that ARK chooses to invest in for this fund will fall in to one of the four categories, which include orbital aerospace companies, the satellites and the launch vehicles who actually stay in orbit. We have the suborbital companies, these companies who provide service and operate the launch vehicles and the platforms that don't have the velocity needed to remain in orbit over the longer term. We have the enabling technology companies. These are of course the brands who help develop the technologies used for space exploration and the related companies, which include something like artificial intelligence, robotics, 3D printing, materials, and energy storage. And finally, the fourth category is the aerospace beneficiary companies. And this is where Netflix, of course, would fall in to this big sector and why it's included in this ETF. And some of the big industries include internet access, GPS, construction, imaging, drones, air taxis, and electric aviation vehicles. So of course, the ETF is very broad. There's around 40 different holdings and into four subcategories each company fits in. And going forward, as more space companies go public through SPACs or IPOs, this fund will continue to add more, shift out the positions, and invest in the companies they believe provide the best exposure and the best benefits from greater outer space expansion. And some of the top holdings include Trimble, the 3D printing ETF, Kratos, L3 Harris, and JD.com. And we're going to take a closer look at the top three names which make up around 20 plus percent of the overall weight in this ETF right now. And coming in at number three, we have Kratos, Defense and Security Solutions. They currently trade for $28 per share, and over the past 12 months, the company has climbed close to 90%. And at this current level, they sit with a $3.2 billion market cap, so it is a smaller company that makes up around 5% of this total ETF. And right now, they operate in a few main defense categories like unmanned systems, space communications, C5 ISR systems, and warfight readiness. Kratos is also a major player in the satellite industry, and the company is a leading provider of satellite command and control systems. And at this current point in time, Kratos supports around 80% of all space missions with regard to satellite control systems. So right now, the company is already a leader in a fast-growing space and ARK has them as the third largest holding within this ETF. And over the past quarter, the company saw revenue growth over the Q4 2019 number and their adjusted EBITDA was up as well, which is a great sign. And now if we jump back to the top 10 list, we can see that the second largest holding in this fund with around 6% of the weight is a 3D printing ETF that trades under ticker PRNT for $38 per share. And over the trailing 12 months, it has grown by 123%. And this is actually one of ARK's own ETFs. And this is one of their core funds within their diversified portfolio. And they believe that 3D printing is one of the highest growth industries in the economy as they plan to transform the manufacturing landscape. And quickly going over their performance, since inception, this fund has averaged over 11% annual growth, which is absolutely incredible. And over the one year from this report, we can see a total return of over 40%. And if we take a look at their top 10 holdings, some big names include Exxon, HP, Renishaw, Microsoft is the fifth holding, Trimble once again, and many more. So if you want exposure to the 3D printing sector, here's another ARK ETF that you can take a look at for your portfolio. And that is the second holding in this aerospace and space exploration ETF, which is very interesting that ARK chooses to invest 6% of this fund in another one of their own ETFs. And if we take a look now at the largest holding coming in at around 8.6% of the total weight, we have Trimble. They trade under ticker TRMB, for $76 per share. And over the trailing 12 months, they have grown by 152% and they're currently trading with a market cap at $18.75 billion. And this is a company that operates within the agricultural sector that is poised to see a ton of benefit due to greater satellite and space exploration. And they're transforming the way the world works. And if you understand what ARC does is they invest in companies focus on destructive innovation in changing how we conduct our daily lives. And right at the beginning of Trimble's investor presentation, 
they say that exact line, which is a core holding and a core feature of ARK's overall investing philosophy. And we can see that right now, they operate in four main categories, which are geospatial, construction, agricultural, and transportation. And within each subcategory, they are a main player, delivering huge results and operating with many different companies each and every year. And right now, for example, Trimble Technology is on 99% of the top 200 trucking fleets within the United States. So a very large company worth around $19 billion and they make up over 8.5% of the total ARC Innovation Space Exploration ETF. And you can now purchase shares of this fund for $20 on the public market. This is a highly anticipated ETF. When the news broke a couple weeks ago that this fund was going to go public, many investors all across the world we're looking forward to what companies would be included in ARK's top holdings. And right now, we're going to wrap up the video. Thank you for watching to the end. Of course, we went through a complete overview of ARKX, took a look at the fund's philosophy, the descriptions, the type of companies they're going to invest in, and of course, quickly discussed their top three holdings. So thank you for watching to the end. Please hit that like button and subscribe. Let me know down in the comments if you're going to buy this fund or if you own any of ARK's wide suite of very popular and high growth ETFs right now. Thanks for watching and I will see you in tomorrow's video.